The moment you say someone made me feel or someone did something to me, you've relinquished all your power. You've basically, you know, in the driver's seat, you've given them the, uh, the, the steering wheel and be like, here you go, you do the driving. But he manipulated me. He kept tabs on me because you allowed it to happen. That ain't your man. That ain't your husband. Tell your big brother, right? The, the problem is that there wasn't a mahram involved from the go. Allah, you showed me who I shouldn't be married to. Allah, you showed me what kind of man I really need in my life. Allah, thank you for that, right? He got married, alhamdulillah, Allah. He got married, good for him. I feel bad for his wife, but good for her. You know what I mean? Allah, have I really established my connection with Salah with you yet? Allah, if I haven't, I need to prioritize that before getting into a relationship because Allah, how can I be in a relationship with another human being when I'm not in a relationship with you, ya Rabbi. Way of life as Q, keeping it a hundred. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to another episode of Ask SQ. I haven't done one of these in a while and where you ask me a question, uh, usually via DM on my Instagram right over here and you should be following me on Instagram, by the way, for daily uh, reminders. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, you send me a question within my DMs and I respond to that question. I get a lot of questions I respond, but uh, yesterday I got a question that I felt like was sort of not, not just interesting, but also uh, that would help a lot of people out over here. So uh, before we jump into that question, it's a juicy one, by the way, I want to let you know about the partners of today's video, which is My Taz Kia. My Taz Kia is an online program that helps you with coaching to coach you out of uh, pornography, sex, or masturbation addictions, guys. So uh, please give them a, a check out. If there's something that you need is completely anonymous, if it's something that a loved one, a family member needs, please go check them out, guys, and uh, sign up for their program to help you or a loved one get out of that ugly disgusting habit that's dragging you down now let's jump straight into the video so i'm going to read you the dm from the sister and um i i want to tell the sister because more than likely she's going to actually view this uh video and anyone else who's going through these things that when you hit me up for a solution or something like that and a brother called me today about that and that video is going to be out tomorrow inshallah um like i'm going to tell you some harsh truths that you might not want to hear but that's why you're hitting me up because I got to tell you how it is, right? And if I didn't do that, I'd be doing a disservice to yourself and obviously to myself and my community as well. And the name for this video will be more than likely voted on my Instagram. So if you want to participate in what the name of this video is going to be, it's because I am, I'm going to post a poll on my Instagram stories. Go check it out and vote for what you think is the best title. Uh, so if there's any clickbait happening, it's you who's creating that clickbait, not me. Okay, let's jump into this um, uh, question that the sister has. Okay, so this is how it begins. I was speaking to a guy for two years, okay? Uh, before we, we get into that part, if you have to speak to someone for that long, they're playing games with you. Straight from the go, but let's continue to move on. I met him at my undergrad, a very common place for people to meet people, uh, meaning for, for those of you in the UK, that means uh, they were in uni when they met them, okay? So they met someone at uni. It's a very common place for people uh, to meet other uh, potential spouses, potentially, okay? He told me he wanted to marry me, and I had the intention to as well. Sounds so good so far. I wonder where it's going to go wrong. Uh, throughout, I found out that he was a flirt, he was unfaithful, and I wanted to get rid of him since he clearly wasn't husband material, and he treated me horribly, didn't respect me at all. MashaAllah, this sister clearly has a good head on her shoulders. So what could be the issue, right? Like, you clearly don't want any part of him. You don't want to be with him. You don't want him in your life or anything like that. So how, how could this be a bad thing? Well, like, think about it. You've done half the work. Isn't that the toughest part? For you to actually realize that someone is not good for you, you're actually realizing right now that, yo, this person legit is not good for me, yet you're still sort of caught up on the dude. Let's keep going. Uh, but every time I would try to end things, he would manipulate me into trying to speak to him again, and he kept on trying to keep tabs on me, so on and so forth, okay? Uh, I want to let you know something that manipulative people exist, okay? Uh, chances are that you're probably in a relationship with someone out there, people who are watching this, that you're probably in a manipulative type of relationship, maybe with a narcissist or someone who is manipulative. But I, I, I just, that was, I, I, what was that? I want to let you know that you cannot relinquish your power, your strength to the other person by saying, oh, they're manipulative. They're manipulating me into doing things. You see, there's a lot of things in our life that we don't have control over. For example, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could just take away your job, right? A loved one could pass away. Um, 
your car could just get damaged. Like, you know, there's so many uncontrollable events that can happen in our lives that we literally have no control over. But there's one thing that we all have control over, and that's how we communicate to ourselves. It's how we feel. The moment you say someone made me feel or someone did something to me, you've relinquished all your power. You've basically, you know, in the driver's seat, you've given them the, uh, the, the steering wheel and be like, here you go, you do the driving. Your feelings, your self-talk, your communication, the meanings that you make of those situations that happen in your life. So, for example, you can't control if a family member dry, dies, right? Not dries. A family member dies or some, like, really unfortunate event or circumstance happens to you. But you can control what it means. Does that make sense? I hope that's sort of like unlocking sort of some part of you right now, right? Because it's, it's our responsibility to control what things mean to us. So if that, if something's happening in your life right now, and you're just like, man, that means Allah hates me, Allah is punishing me, then Habibi, you're right. That's exactly what's happening to you because that's the meaning you've made. That's the meaning you're choosing to focus upon. And notice the word I'm using is choosing, okay? Uh, you're choosing to focus upon that. So if you're choosing to focus upon making meanings that are less empowering and makes you look like the victim, Victim and people need to feel sorry for you, then that's the exact life that you're going to be living. But if you choose to make a more empowering meaning like, hey, you know, Allah brought this person in my life. There's more to read, by the way. Allah brought this person in my life to show me what kind of man I don't want in my life. That's an empowering meaning, right? But the opposite is what you're doing right now. You're saying, but he manipulated me. He kept tabs on me because you allowed it to happen. That ain't your man. That ain't your husband. Tell your big brother, right? The, the problem is that there wasn't a mahram involved from the go. You see what I'm saying? The problem is that there is no mahram involved, so that's why he's keeping tabs on you. He can oppress you because you don't have your big brother, your father, or someone in the conversation. So it's just you and him. It's mano y mano, and then that's that. You know what I mean? So, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> Where you go with this, SQ? Okay. Anyway, so he was going to Pakistan and he messaged me before he was going and he wanted to see me before, before his trip. I didn't go to see him. Mashallah, very good for you. I'm happy that you're keeping your piety, your chastity and all that sort of stuff. Uh, before I even finish this, uh, this message, I already told myself that he's going to go there to get married. And let's see what happened. But throughout his Pakistan trip, he was FaceTiming me and messaging me as if we were together and just uh, speaking to me in such a flirtatious language and also saying how he wants to bring me to Pakistan, etc. Et you know what? Pakistan does that to you, man. Pakistan does this thing. It, lives, it gives you this fantasy world because everything is so good at Pakistan, honestly, right? You go there, everyone is giving you botal, oh, you botal pio, oh, you eat khao, you eat roti lo, you know, you know, like you feel like a freaking king or a queen over there, and you're just like, yo, Pakistan is where it's at, yo, I need to bring you to Pakistan, you need to come to Pakistan, you need to come to my house, we got a bunch of land. Pakistan does that to you. It's like a fantasy world or whatever the case might be. But the fact that he's in Pakistan and doing these sort of things uh, with you, and though you're not together, as you mentioned, um, shows his character, but it also shows how you've allowed him to do that. I want to let you know a secret, okay? This is a, this is a, it's a hidden truth that no one really knows about. Uh, when someone tries to FaceTime you, come a little closer. You don't have to pick up. I know that's revelation for some of you out there uh, because people are like, oh, he keeps calling me. He keeps doing this. You do understand that you don't have to pick up the FaceTime calls. You don't have to pick up. You don't have to respond to the text messages. You don't have to respond to the DMs. You don't. You could block people. There's certain things that you could do. But secretively, sometimes we like the attention. Sometimes we like the vibes that we're getting. Sometimes we like feeling important. And that's what this sister is suffering with. And probably a lot of other sisters, or sometimes even brothers, a lot of brothers get at me like, why are you always talking about brothers like that? You know, because first and foremost, I've been there. I've been that guy who's done that to her. I've been that guy. That's not me. This dude is a rookie. Clearly, he's doing a bad job, right? But I've been that guy who's done that to her. And honest to God, uh, I know what it's like, so I could get in the head a little bit better. But, you know, I know sisters are doing this to brothers too. It's rare. It's less likely. It's happening, but it's less likely than a male doing it to a sister. Okay. Um, okay, okay, etc. All the nice things basically a girl likes to hear. So basically all the things that you wanted to hear. And he knew it. He, he knew your key. Everyone has a key, right? He knew what your key was, and he was, he was taking advantage of that key. Don't blame him. Blame yourself for showing your key. 
blame yourself for you know giving him your key. But if you gave him your key, couldn't you change the locks? Damn, SQ, you'd be giving some crazy analogies, son. And you know the worst part is I read those comments where you're like, you got, oh, SQ, you're so underrated and all that. I believe that. I do believe that. I do believe I'm underrated. I believe that I have something to offer that no other Muslim YouTuber space has to offer. I can get you a serious video. I can give you a video like this. I can give you a different video. So I'm very versatile. But Alhamdulillah, I think that this allows my content to be more widespread. And it's a, it's like a variety. It's like a buffet of content, mashallah. Okay. May Allah protect me. Okay. Anyways, he comes back and I don't hear from him. Oh, and I find out that he got married in Pakistan. Hi, 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 hi. Kya hua? Okay, yeah, I could have told you that. Okay, now obviously I'm completely heartbroken. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, tell me that. What do you mean? Obviously you're heartbroken. I thought you wanted nothing to do with the guy. Oh, he was keeping tabs on me. Oh, he was doing this. Now all of a sudden, obviously you're heartbroken. It's obvious because you've made it. The meaning that you made of your situation was negative. The meaning that you made was less empowering. It's disempowering actually. The meaning that you you're making of your situation, uh, you know, everything is happening to you and not for you. So the meaning you're making, instead of the meaning, let me give you a positive meaning that you could have made. That Allah removed the scumbag from my life. That could have been the meaning, right? Allah, you showed me who I shouldn't be married to. Allah, you showed me what kind of man I really need in my life. Allah, thank you for that, right? He got married, alhamdulillah, Allah, he got married, good for him. I feel bad for his wife, but good for her, you know what I mean? But here's the problem with that. You chose to make a more, more negative meaning of your situation. And remember what I said earlier in this, that the only thing that we can control is the meaning that we make of our life situations. And the communication that you're doing or giving to yourself is very negative. Hence, you're feeling really uh, trash about yourself right now. Okay, uh, I'm completely heartbroken. I also feel disrespected about how he used me. I, I, I feel like... Yes, you should, but at the same time, it's probably more a lot more projection, meaning that you feel stupid for like allowing him to do that. You understand? Like he didn't use you, you allowed him to use you. See, those are two different things. If you say someone used you versus you allowed them to use, one has a meaning that is empowering, the other one is disempowering. You could decide, obviously, which one is the empowering one, which one is the disempowering one. It's the other one. It's the first one that's uh, disempowering, just in case some dudes out there who doesn't understand okay but my question is i don't wish anything bad upon him or his wife i'm mature enough to not pray for that in fact i prayed for him and his wife and well and a happy life okay good good mashallah good that's a good thing to do isn't it then what's the wrong what's wrong with that then you were mature enough to pray for someone pray for the life that they have pray for everything like that pray for a good life and all that sort of stuff okay so what's the problem okay now the question is why am i suffering it hurt when he did bad and I had pure intentions the whole time. Why does it feel like he's winning when he did me dirty, but he's over there all happy and married? So, so here's the thing, right? If you're, I think that you were being passive aggressive. I don't believe that you were genuinely happy for him, right? Because if you're genuinely happy for someone, then khalas, you know, you know, live your life, mashallah, do what you have to do, yaar, you know, live your life and, you know, good for you. You know what I mean? But... When you're passive aggressively saying, oh yeah, yeah, may Allah bless you. But in your heart, you feel like Allah shouldn't bless you. Then there's a problem, right? If you're happy, you made dua. Shouldn't you be excited that Allah answered your duas? That he's living a good life, he's happy, he's married. Why are you feeling bad? Because you've allowed yourself to feel bad, right? The meaning that you've made is that he's having fun and I'm suffering. That's the communication tool and mechanism that you've given to yourself. You need to change that story and that communication. If you really, I'm not going to read the rest because I'm sure it's like pretty much the same at this point, right? Like it would have been interesting if she was just like, he came back into my life. Wait, did she say that at any point? Let me just check. Let me just check. Winning. Uh, no, I think that that was about it. Uh, okay, so the thing is that you're considering him to win. It's because you're considering yourself to lose, right? Nor should you think of other people as losers and yourself winners. But like, why can't it just be a wash of a situation where Allah puts you through a test, right? And this is the meaning that I'm giving you a more positive meaning, right? And I, I encourage not just this sister, but all of you guys out there that if you're stuck in a negative situation, it's because you've given your circumstance or situation or event a negative meaning. And that negative meaning came from how you communicated with yourself. I know some of you are like, damn SQ, you get in my head right now. I am. Okay, no doubt about it. Inshallah, let's keep going. 
I'm trying to give you an example of a meaning. I want you out there to give your own meaning, right? Like, obviously, this is for the sister out there, but what about you, right? If you're going through some rough uh, patch of your life right now, it's because you're giving that circumstance a negative meaning because you're communicating negatively to yourself. Change your communication. Change the meaning. Change the communication. The meaning will change. And if you change the meaning, you'll feel differently, so on and so forth. It's a domino effect after that, a positive domino effect versus the negative domino effect that you're in currently right now, okay? I'm going to give you an example of the meaning, right? The meaning that you've currently made is that you've lost, he's won. He's living happily ever after and you're suffering over here. He used you, he abused you, he manipulated you, blah, 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 blah. So you feel bad about yourself. Now think about it, guys. If I told you someone feels used, abused, uh, manipulated, harmed, hurt, violated, I mean, don't they have a good reason to feel bad about themselves? Right? Wouldn't, wouldn't they have a good, fair enough reason? Wouldn't you feel a little bad about yourself? Hell yeah, you would, right? Because that's the meaning that you've given yourself by communicating that to yourself. Let's communicate something different to yourself, okay? The communication should be just an example, and you could make up your own communication, girl, if you're watching this right now, sister, or anyone suffering right now with this. That, ah, it was my own mistake that I let someone in when I know I should have done it a better way. How could I have done this better? Well, I could have got my dad involved. I could have got my brother involved. I could have got even my mom involved, an older sister involved, some family member on my side involved, an aunt, an uncle, someone, you could have got them involved. Okay, that was my first mistake. Guess what? I can fix that moving forward in the next situation or circumstance I get myself into. Okay, next. Okay, he was manipulating me and he was keeping tabs on me. Well, I sort of allowed him to do that, right? Like I allowed him to feel manipulated, uh, manipulating me. Maybe I was feeling manipulated because I was feeling a little low about myself, a little down about myself. Maybe I wasn't feeling beautiful. Maybe my connection with Allah wasn't as strong back then. Hence... I was allowed or easily manipulated, right? Because I was missing something and he was providing that abundance that I was uh, when I was living in scarcity. Okay, cool. Now, he's living a good life. He's married and you're not. Okay, here the meaning that you've made is that he's winning, he, you're losing. Well, instead, well, why can't you both win? Okay, mashallah, may Allah bless him. May Allah increase their marriage, keep their mar marriage firm on the deen, on the haq. Ameen. Now, Allah, maybe this is a sign that, hey, my, my time is coming soon. Or you know what, Allah, maybe there's a lot of more issues within me that I need to still fix and develop before I'm ready to complete the other half of my deen. Allah, have I really established my connection with Salah with you yet? Allah, if I haven't, I need a prior prioritize that before getting into a relationship because Allah, how can I be in a relationship with another human being when I'm not in a relationship with you, Ya Rabbi? That's something we need to think about, huh? Okay. So I need to prioritize my relationship with you, Allah. That's what matters the most right now, not being in a relationship with another human being. Okay. Then I might need to become in a relationship with myself a little bit so I learn more about myself so I don't get manipulated in the future. Okay. Now, once I do that, I'm going to start getting on my deen a little bit more. And then once I'm ready and you feel that I'm ready, Ya Allah, you're going to bless me with someone entering my life who's going to improve the quality of my life, is going to help me draw closest to Allah, and I'm going to help bring them value as well to Allah. But Allah, guess what? You've taught me from a prior experience about how not to behave, how not to you know, get married to someone. So Allah, I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind. And I'm going to remember the cues of a person who might be a manipulator, a narcissist, assist or something like that. And Allah, you know what I'm going to do, Allah? I'm going to make sure that the new person in my life doesn't do that to me, Allah. And if he does, I'm going to catch it. If he does, I'm going to vocalize it. If he does, I'm going to speak to my family about this. And if it's the case, I'll leave it. And I know, Allah, you're going to replace him with someone better for me. You see, when you make, I just made that up on the spot. Obviously, I, that, that wasn't planned. I'm just sitting over here freaking doing this. You know what I mean? The reason is, is because I'm used to communicating to myself in a positive way. That doesn't mean SQ doesn't communicate themselves in a negative way. That's not what it means. It means when I do, I catch myself. I'm used to making positive relationships, positive connections with myself. I'm used to making more empowering meanings to myself. Hence, I'm able to help you do the same thing. And that is the number one tool that I can help instill in you. And honestly, God, that's what I want to do. I want to instill a positive tool such as uh, positive meaning making and positive connection. Now, that's going to take a a long time. It's not going to take 100,000 subscribers. It's probably going to take 2 million subscribers before that takes place. But just know that this is the journey that you and I have signed up to be a part of. So to that sister out there, or any other sister or brother out there struggling with this type of thing, I hope this video helped you. And I hope 
all of you out there who found help will find the need to share it with people so it could help them as well because I believe that this message can help a lot of people. I appreciate you all. Jazakallah khair for listening and watching as well. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you uh, and anyone else struggling with a spouse, with a pious good spouse who makes you be, feel better because a good spouse will never manipulate you. Just remember that, okay? Love you all for the sake of Allah. Check out some of my other videos right over here. And uh, if you want to be a part of an uh, episode of Ask SQ, obviously it's all anonymous, DM me, right? And definitely follow me on Instagram because there's a lot of daily reminders happening over there. Love you all for the sake of Allah. And until next time, I'm out.